It's certainly not easy to ask for help if you're struggling with a mental health issue. And in many minority communities, admitting you need help can be as, seen as a sign of weakness. Why is there so much reluctance and what can be done to break the stigma? We're joined this morning by psychiatrist Dr. Tamika Anderson and Dr. Kinwal Sadu, both with Community Health Network. Good morning to the both of you and thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning and thank you for having us. Dr. Anderson, we're going to start with you. What barriers prevent blacks from actually getting mental health care compared to other ethnic groups? Yes, so there's several factors that go into that, but one of the main ones is stigma. You know, the black community has had to endure quite a, a large amount of ad adversity and has um, prevailed through that, and so oftentimes, in the black community, um, it can be perceived as a weakness or an embarrassment to admit to needing help or to feel overwhelmed and helpless or sad or anxious and worried. Additionally, uh, you know, the, in the black community, faith is a huge foundation to um, our beliefs and our core values. And a lot of times, unfortunately, people directly see kind of um, their emotions they feel are directly tied to either mm. their faith or their belief. Um, and so they feel like if they admit to needing help or feeling overwhelmed or helpless or even the thought of having some suicidal thoughts, mm. it shows that their faith is not mm. strong enough. Mm. And, um, and so that oftentimes prevents them from seeking the help that they need and, and keeps them silent, unfortunately. Yeah. Dr. Sadu, I want to bring you into the conversation now, too, especially with the recent FedEx shooting that left the Sikh community really feeling targeted. What impact does that have on the community and mental health? Yes, uh, you know, the Sikhs are very resilient, you know, very enterprising community in general. You know, they come across from seven seas to be part of this great story, you know, this great American experiment. Um, but, you know, as you know, it can be discouraging when, you know, when things like happen when you feel targeted. Uh, but the local community, uh, the Hoosier community has been um, uh, very helpful. They've come together to assist and, you know, to uh, support uh, all the, you know, the victims' families and the community at large. There has been tremendous uh, outpouring of uh, compassion uh, by the local uh, government, law enforcement, and just regular people. You know, so much uh, uh, support and you know, fundraising and you know, even changes in policy as a result of the, the shooting and the red laws. Um, so the six, you know, uh, definitely are, are feeling targeted, but, but they're dealing um, the best they can. You know, uh, they are, like I said, a resilient community. They're seeking help from other people, acknowledging the pain. Um, and of course, we'll see what the long term consequences are, you know, how the kids deal with it, how the younger people deal with it. But, you know, our record shows that the six rise from adversity and, you know, make the best out of, uh, uh, out of a situation like that. All right. And Dr. Uh, Anderson, I'm going to bring you back into the conversation quickly. What resources are available to the black community and how can we break the stigma? Yeah, I think definitely as far as breaking the stigma is n normalizing it, letting the people know that they are not alone. I mean, Research has shown that there, you know, the black community makes up 13.4% of the U.S. population. Of those, 16% endorse having a mental illness. So it's definitely not something that you know one person is dealing with. So acknowledging that, acknowledging that it is truly a medical condition and that there is help out there and resources out there, um, I think is really going to help break down that stigma, just educating, and then also, you know, providing more diversity in the mental health field so that people can feel comfortable coming and speaking up based on their cultural experiences. In regards to specific kind of um, resources out there, the National Hope Line Network, Suicide Crisis Hotline, if you're concerned that yourself or someone that you love may, you know, be struggling with a mental illness, they're available and you can contact them at 800-442-HOPE. That's 800-442-HOPE, which is 4673. Or our uh, crisis hotline that we have at Community is open 24-7 uh, days a week. And you can text IN 
to 741741. Thank you both so much for joining us. This is going to be a continuing conversation that we have, and we also have a number of resources on our website also that you can find them at fox59.com slash links. Again, both of you, thank you this morning.